Hello, hello, more gamers here and welcome to another day of the Skilling Open 2020. And today I would like to show you one of the games from the quarterfinals. Because after three days of the of the preliminary stage, we have eight best players out of 16. Uh, and this is knockout bracket. Magnus Carlsen is going to play against Anish Giri, Levon Aronian against Yanni Pomniashi, Wesley So against Taimur Rajabov and Maxim Vasil Lagraf against Hikaru Nakamura. So I would like to show you the game between Wesley So, who's going to play as white, and Taimur Rajabov, who's going to play as black, of course. And, and without further ado, let's see what happened in this very, very beautiful and exciting game. So uh, Wesley So started with c4. We have knight f6, knight c3, e5. So English opening, king's English variation. And now we have knight f3, knight c6. So four knights variation. Couple of days ago, I show you the game where he Hikaru Nakamura actually played a g3, so this variation, however, here Wesley so went for e3. And this is of course well-known theory, we have couple of uh, thousand games uh, in the, with this opening, um, and now we have bishop b4, queen c2, very interesting maneuver with the queen, just if you don't know, if you are not aware, uh, we have the castle, knight d5 now, rook e8, and now queen goes to f5. So uh, I show you already the game on this channel where Jan Krzysztof Duda went this queen f5 against Magnus Carlsen. This is the main idea here. Uh, however, Jan Krzysztof Duda got the really great preparation for this game and he won against Magnus Carlsen. So um, now we have d6 in both of the games and now after knight f6 there are two options. So how would you take with the queen uh, or with the pawn? Uh, actually, both of these uh, moves are correct and um, lead to completely different games. So Magnus Carlsen went for G takes on F6. So he wanted to pres preserve the queens on the on the board against Jan Krzysztof Duda. And Jan Krzysztof Duda went for the queen H5. And then after D5, uh, he played A3, kicking the bishop. So bishop F8, very nice square for the bishop. The rook make the, make the move to E8 just to, you know, uh, make the space for the bishop. Um, and then, Bishop d3. Very interesting continuation. Look at this. Uh, there is the checkmate on the h7. Uh, but of course now we have e4 and now c takes on d5. Okay. Uh, e takes on d3. D takes on c6 and b takes on c6. And, and now b4. Uh, a5. Bishop b2. And if you are interested in this line, because this is very, very interesting and Jan Krzysztof Duda won against Magnus Carlsen from this position, but you already see that his bishop is pointing in the king's position. The queen is over there. The knight also have... Uh, very comfortable game. White also can castle, bring the rooks to the game. Uh, so if you are interested, check out this link, this video. Uh, and I really guarantee this was a very, very beautiful game. However, Taimur Rajabov didn't take with the pawn. He said, okay, I'm gonna exchange the queens. Uh, I'm gonna have the, the little bit bad the pawn structure. However, we're not gonna have the queens uh, on the board. That's not gonna be so risky for me. So we have queen f6, g takes on f6 and now a3 so the ideas are very very similar we have bishop c5 and now b4 so kicking the bishop even further to b6 and now bishop b2 uh, and here we have the main line which is a5 um, and then after b5 knight e7 uh, and then d4 so this is also well-known theory uh, we have more than 20 games however white really have the great advantage most of the games are actually won by white uh, Taimur Rajabov went for very silent a6 a6 because what he wants to do is bring the knight to the e7 and maybe in the future push the uh, push the pawn um, and then he doesn't want to you know get trapped with the bishop so just prophylactic move making a space for the bishop uh, for the future and now his position is still quite solid uh, maybe not in the front of the king but it's also not so easy uh, to attack the position of the king so the king is um, very very safe here uh, 
we have Castle by Wesley So and we have one game in the database where actually Bishop E6 was played uh, and then of course preparing preparing this D5 move. However, Termu Rajabov went for Bishop F5. It's quite a novelty, but not really the great one because now what White could play is G4. G4, very strong move and this Bishop has to decide what to do. Of course, uh, the pawn cannot be taken because that, that is the pin uh, and now white gonna win this bishop and the game bishop g6 doesn't look so great as well because h4 and black gonna be in troubles white gonna have very very comfortable game very nice attack against the, the king's position so probably bishop e6 and that means uh you know that would be losing a tempo and it's it was just not necessary uh, however wesley so wanted to prepare uh, this g4 move and he played rook g1 so um, very interesting that he didn't see that G4 is a, is a really great move immediately. Uh, and now we have Knight E7. So the Bishop is not supporting this D5 move, but Knight on the e7 yes uh, and here g4 was of course possible however d4 uh just saying okay i'm gonna strike in the center first indeed this is the best move in the position however by by not playing g4 first and uh, now wesley so uh gonna have a little bit troubles with actually developing uh, the bishop and the rook and you will see how that happened so we have bishop e4 it looks like very very strange move however it's provoked Wesley so uh, to moving the knight so now we have knight d2 uh, and now bishop g6 and now knight f3 so the idea is just um, Taimur Rajabov make the move to g6 uh, and then now he is also on his move so now as he lost the, the already the tempo on a, a6 and now he gonna play a5 so he you know win some tempo on this side but then also lose the tempo here so everything is fine with the position for them for the both of the sides uh, we have b5 very typical in these positions uh, we have c6 so what Taimur wants to do is open the position and strike on the position of the king uh, we have a4 now strengthening the, the pawn on b5 c takes on b5 a takes on b5 and now a4 so running with this pawn looks very very dangerous but now we have bishop a3 saying you don't go uh, you shall not pass i'm gonna guard the a3 and here Taimur Rajabov take on the on the d4 and now it's the very important how to take with the pawn or with the knight um, if you po po take with the with the pawn you're gonna have this pawn structure so ready to roll c5 and so on however better in this position was actually to play with the knight and there is very important reason yes you still have this weakness on the c4 however it's defended by the bishop for now uh, but also this knight is defending c2 why it's important you will see in the game now if black would like to actually remove the the knight that is not the really greatest idea because after bishop d4 rook d4 and let's say knight f5 the rook simply retreat to d1 and now what is going on white has the pair of bishops very very uh, strong asset but also look at the position of the uh, of the black pawns the pawn structure is terrible one two three four and five pawn islands uh this this is just disaster strategically positionally this is just a disaster for black so white has a very very nice and comfortable game also this pawn is gonna be lost uh, i don't see how to defend it for example yes you can bring the rook and so on or just you know sacrifice the pawn on d5 um but but white of course gonna push the pawn and so on so very difficult position however in our game we have e takes on d4 uh so it looks like these pawns are very very, very strong c5 is coming um, and uh, what can go wrong what can go wrong boom knight d5 this is what Taimur Rajabov played sacrificing the knight and now take the knight or don't take the knight actually the knight cannot be taken because if it's taken look what's gonna happen rook a to c8 the, the, the king have to go somewhere and now rook c2 with the check with getting to the second rank uh, and now white are really in the troubles if king b1 we're gonna have a discovered check are uh, not very strong however good 
enough to win the game because after king c1 rook a2 now attacking the bishop so bishop b2 now a3 and the bishop is trapped uh, bishop c3 rook c8 and black gonna win back the material and have a tremendous actually um, advantage with these two rooks against the against the king's position with all of these pieces in the in the corner this is of course winning and the bishop slicing all these squares around the king this is just winning for uh, for black so after rook c2 king a1 but it's not really the better uh slightly better but bishop a5 is coming with some plans also uh, attacking the position of the king for example now white could exchange the the, the bishops but then simply uh rook d3 just avoiding to losing and um, the rook and now the bishop is under attack so bishop b2 now only rook d3 and after rook d3 bishop d3 what you gonna play next you can bring the rook to them to the open file but then uh, rook e2 is also coming uh, and now the problem is even if you exchange them the bishops that black gonna win that game bishop b5 and these two pawns are really really powerful uh, also uh, the rook attacking the, the pawn structure uh, on the king side, this is completely winning for black as well. So taking the knight is not even possible. This is why we have king b2 first uh, and now bishop a5 by Teimur Rajabov. And here again, what to play? Actually taking the knight would be possible, uh, but only in the eyes of the, of the engine. Because after taking the knight, the problem is rook a to c8 is coming and this is the threat uh, but white are in time to actually uh, cover that square so for example rook c3 could come bishop g6 exchanging this very very dangerous bishop on this diagonal it's deadly it looks like it's very weak after g4 and h4 however now it just you know play very beautiful and now black would have to play first rook b3 with check and after king e2 rook e2 first with the check knight d2 and finally only then h takes on g6 uh, and now this position is actually considered a slightly better for black even black is down the material however the knight is pinned that is the first problem so for uh, white they have to uh, defend that, that knight but then we have rook d3 and now the knight cannot be moved cannot be defended anymore what white can do is try to exchange the rooks this way so rook d2 e, e, e1 but now black gonna win one pawn if this rook is gonna gonna be moved then uh, of course losing another two pawns so rook e2 f1 and after rook e2 threefold repetition uh, or black can try to play for the win but it would be rather difficult so for example rook d2 d2 bishop d2 rook d2 king a3 and now there is the choice take this pawn and play being exchanged down or play something like rook d3 and lose this pawn uh, this is also possible uh, winning the exchange back uh, and now of course um, this is rather a draw this is rather a draw yes these pawns are, are weak but also so the king is very close to the b6 pawn yes now can play something like b6 and um, but then of course we have rook e8 king g7 uh, a rook can come to the, this pawn uh, but this should be actually the draw rook d4 rook d5 uh, and uh, most of the end, end games like this with the rook end game uh, ends with the draw so uh, that was also possible so uh, c takes on d5 as you see very risky very complicated looks like black gonna have a lot of initiative but at the end uh, it was possible uh, but wesley so it seems like he goes for the win because he doesn't care about the the knight and all of these complications he went for bishop d6 saying okay i don't want your knight uh, but i'm gonna have this three uh, pawns uh, which gonna be very very powerful and your pawn your counterplay on the a4 is not that great uh, so Teimur Rajabov now he gonna lose the knight so without the pawn on the on the c6 it's a very risky to actually continue this politic here uh, and we have knight c3 attacking the rook so rook c1 and now knight e4 uh, and here bishop is under attack uh, Wesley so should go with the bishop f4 the pawn 
point is this bishop actually controls a lot of important dark squares and also the bishop cannot be attacked by the pawns there are no pawns on the uh, on the on the g file and on the e file so that would be better however in our game we have bishop g3 much more solid but also look at this position of this of these pieces all of them on the king side and the king is almost naked on the queen side so we have a3 with check and now king a2 uh, so very nice shelter this pawn uh, works as a shelter so the so the rook cannot attack however now we have knight c3 and what to play next what to play next if you move the king somewhere around like king a1 this is completely losing because now knight b1 and, and the problem is you cannot really take the knight because if you take the knight uh, then black not gonna, gonna take your rook but rather win with the bishop c3 with check and now you have not many moves uh, you have king a2 and now only now bishop b1 okay you see already the difference uh, king a2 and now uh, black of course gonna win the game promote because this bishop makes a lot of good job controlling a1 so that was not even possible to take um, this knight very powerful move uh, so for example white can play something like c5 uh, but then still we have a2 c6 and um, b takes on c6 b takes on c6 and now bishop c3 winning the exchange uh, there is no choice uh, rook c3 knight c3 and now black stands much better here uh, these pieces are still somewhere in the corner uh, this pawn is really really powerful uh, the rook gonna come for example to b1 and this is very very difficult to defend actually black is uh, completely winning here so uh, avoiding to take this pawn is not possible this is why we have king a3 the best move in the position actually by wesley so and now uh Taymor can play bishop b4 sacrificing your knight or is a very very nice tactic actually it's not a very complicated tactic now uh you have to take the bishop because if you don't you're gonna be in troubles knight a2 and now what you're gonna play in, uh, next because the bishop is uh, uh defended also the rook a3 is coming you have to make some space for the king so uh rook a3 uh king c4 but it's completely lost for white uh only now knight c1 and after king b4 uh, rook e to e8 and this position of the king is completely compromised uh, there is the checkmate and white cannot do anything here c6 making a space for the for the king b6 taking under control so maybe something like king c4 trying to escape this way bishop can come to the e4 uh, control both of these squares is not possible anymore bishop d6 uh, prolongs it a bit but it doesn't work too much uh, because we're gonna have a checkmate anyway uh, knight a2 and in the next move that's gonna be a checkmate so doesn't matter what white plays that's gonna be a checkmate so there is not even a choice the bishop has to be taken uh, this time so uh, Taimur Rajabov sacrificed the knight once and then sacrificed the bishop another time uh, now we have of course knight a2 by Taimur so it looks like okay he's gonna take the, the exchange however there is the problem because if the king goes to the b3 king b3 is the strongest move in the position uh, unbelievable but this is king b3 and after knight c1 then king b2 and the knight is trapped uh, except the, uh, the knight want to escape uh, so the knight can go for example to e2 bishop e2 and then rook e2 and king b3 and only then the king can support these pawns and try to uh, actually win with this these pawns the rook already can come for example to c1 support the pawn the bishop supports them the the attack and the and the knight also have a very solid position so this would be extremely difficult actually to play for for black even being the exchange up however in our game we have king c5 and now it's time to pause the video because black have the winning sequence so pause the video find the winning continuation for black while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready 
So the obvious move in this position is, of course, knight c1, uh, but this is losing. This is completely losing. Now white gonna win the game. Look at this. Boom, king b6. What you gonna play? You can actually defend the pawn. However, d5, you do not defending it anymore. Uh, you can play something like knight b3, king b7, uh, and then knight c5 with check. King c6 and now it looks like white gonna be in the trouble because rook e to c8 with check but white have very nice resources. Look at this. Boom! Bishop c7. Ninja bishop out of nowhere and now black are fighting uh, with the resources. Knight d6. Counter resources. Now this knight cannot be taken because of the pin. So now b6 defending the bishop and after knight c7, b takes on c7 finally black can win one of these pawns but only one of the pawns so king c5 rook c to c7 king d4 let's say f5 and white still stands better uh, even being uh, down the material down the exchange however have also this connected past pawn two connected past pawns and the rook is free i can also enter the game uh, or even support these pawns uh, so that's even better idea so this was possible knight c1 is just losing move the winning move which T timur rajabov actually found immediately is boom rook e6 and congratulations if you found it now what is the idea First, the checkmate is coming, b6 followed by the by the knight. So even if rook, for example, uh, covers b4, it's still a checkmate, this time on the c3. So that would be the checkmate in the center of the board. So what are the options for white actually to, to continue? Bishop d6 maybe, sacrificing the bishop, uh, making a shelter for the king uh, to go to b6 to take the, the pawn and trying to roll with the pawns. But it doesn't work because black simply can win the rook here. Um, and now if king b6 also gets the, the bishop uh, and then rook d to d8 and now the king gonna be in the troubles that's gonna be actually the checkmate is not possible to roll with the pawn so for example uh c5 knight b3 now the knight is coming the bishop also can deliver the checkmate so too much is happening around the, the white king and still this all these pieces are are just stuck on the king side and cannot help uh, so for example king c7 just avoiding the check and now bishop e4 is coming anyway uh, let's say c6 now making some space for the for the king but of course and the knight now still can come to them to the e5 if needed uh, so what black can do is simply king f5 bring the king uh, and deliver a checkmate bishop c4 may be going after this dangerous knight but it's not enough king e7 and the king is faster bishop b3 and now rook a to b8 now cutting the position of the of the king delivering the checkmate nothing can be done here bishop e6 only f takes on e6 and after any of the moves knight e5 of whatever uh we gonna have the checkmate so the position is extremely extremely uh dangerous so bishop d6 idea with taking the pawn just doesn't work uh, another idea would be d5 much better however it's still losing rook e to c8 of course with the with the check uh, and now the king cannot go to the to the b4, b6 to the b4 as well because all of these squares of course are controlled by the black pieces so the only move would be king d4 and now rook e4 and now where to move with the king there is only one move king d3 but now of course we're gonna have this cover check on the on the king the rook is already lost but all of that happened with the tempo and now simply rook c1 and now what you're gonna play you have to bring the pieces out so bishop d3 and simply bishop d3 let's say king d3 uh, and then this rook gonna win this this pawns and, and the game for example rook a1 uh, knight c3 now these pawns of course are attacked and and so on so a black should win that but it's only you know exchange up uh, and probably this gonna be the past pawn so black shouldn't have the problems with winning that was the best um, what actually uh, white could achieve here in this position however b6 is so dangerous that wesley so uh, block it immediately but there is a uh, one little drawback in this position and Teimur Rajabov uh, spotted it i hope you see that already 
boom rook a5 and this is a checkmate so tamer actually won in this position and uh, i would like to show you the knockout bracket after the first day of the quarterfinals magnus carlsen as expected won against anish giri there were three draws and only in the last game magnus carlsen said in the interview that it was very very ugly uh, but the first day he won so anish giri in the second day had to actually uh, win i said had because uh because the the uh, second day of the quarterfinals actually um ended but i'm not gonna uh, spoiler anything here uh, i'm showing you uh, also the score uh, where Levon Aronian uh, got his first mini match uh, against Jan Nepomniashi so also he got his his first point here and Temur Rajabov beat actually Wesley so both won with the black pieces and we had the one draw uh, with the white pieces so Temur uh, was definitely very well pre prepared with the black pieces and Maxim Vasil Lagraf actually won the first day uh, against Hikaru Nakamura it was actually fun Funny because during the stream uh, Hikaru got asked um, uh, what he gonna do in the second day and Hikaru make the you know uh, big eyes and what 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 do you mean what what second day uh, and and he just forgot that he gonna play the the second day he thought he got uh, knocked out already after first day so that was also a very funny situation so I will show you of course the the game and the games and uh, of the of the second day of the quarterfinals uh, but for now if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other videos um, uh, from the skilling open quarterfinals and other tournaments press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one